ladies, I am Sherlyn Woodburn. Let us begin. Now, the, before I go into our CSEC English B copyrighted objectives, I have a very important concept to teach you today. And so, while I am getting ready, I am asking you, what is a sentence? Do you know the answer to that? Yes. You are going to tell me that a sentence is a complete thought. Now, I have two expressions on the board. Let us look at them. This one says, I am in the classroom. And the second one says, I am in the classroom. Which of the two thoughts are complete? Both are complete. That's right. Okay, then. Now, which of the two is acceptable? This one? No, this one. All right. So if you say to me, a sentence is a complete thought, and you just say it, I would say yes. It is indeed a complete thought. But that definition would not be complete because we are in a situation in which we communicate through writing. And we have standardized ways of writing. Therefore, which of the two would be acceptable if you are going to write, I am in the classroom? All right then, would it be number one or number two? The answer is number two. Why is number two correct? It is correct because when you're writing a sentence, you begin with a capital letter and end with an end mark. This may seem elementary to you, but it is very critical that you remember that you do not start a sentence with a common letter. And today we are looking at expressing ourselves in complete thoughts. That is to say, expressing ourselves in sentences. Now, I am going to show you a concept. And I have something here in this wrapper. All right? Look and tell me if you know what it is. See it? <laughs> What's this? It is a bun. It's a bun. Okay. Okay. Smells great. This is a bun. And as you look at it, you will agree with me that this is a bun that is ready to eat. Right? You could just put it in your mouth and savor the sweetness and the spiciness. This bun is ready to eat. It is complete. It is baked, well put together, shaped, and ready to eat. Agreed. So then, this is a complete item. If I say a sentence is a complete thought, and I say that this bun is complete, meaning it is well baked, well spiced, and it is eatable. I can just put it in my mouth and have it. It's complete. Then a sentence is a complete thought. 
This bun is complete. Therefore, a sentence is like a bun that is ready to be eaten. It does not need anything more for me to enjoy it. If a bun is all I have, I can have it. All right. A sentence is a complete thought. It does not need anything more to be properly understood. This bun does not need anything more that's necessary for me to eat it. But I can do something to this bun. Watch me. I am going to open this bun. All right? And I am going to put something inside of it. All right then, so I take my knife and I'm going to open the bun. All right. And I am going to add this to the bun. <laughs> what am I doing? I am improving the taste of the bun. I am adding something more to the bun that is going to affect its original taste. Okay then? So, if a bun that is ready to be eaten is complete, this bun is like a sentence. I am using what is called an analogy. Do you know the word analogy? I'll write it on the board. Analogy. A N A L O G Y. An analogy is a comparison. Two ideas are compared, but the things are different, but there's a, an idea that you can use to link the two. So I'm making an analogy. So, I open the bun, and this bun is like a sentence, and I add something else. All right. So, I have improved the bun with the cheese. Now, whether I put the bun inside, <laughs> Or <laughs> I put the bun outside and get it. I am still having the same effect. Okay then? The most important thing is that I am adding the cheese to the bun. So I add the cheese for convenience inside of the bun. A sentence is like a bun that is ready to be eaten. And when I add cheese to the bun, it's like adding something additional to the sentence. An additional thought goes into the sentence. And we call that thought parenthesis. Parenthesis. Let me do it on the board for you. So I'm going to erase this top one. Take this one off. And I am going to add something to this. The expression I am going to add is a parenthesis. So then, Just like I opened the bun, I am going to create a space in this sentence. So I am going to say, I am, I 
am, okay, teaching, teaching. In the classroom. What I did there, I added a thought, just like this. This was over here. This is the original sentence. And I added something to the thought. What happens when I put teaching inside of the sentence? I have improved the sentence. I am giving more information that is useful to the original thought. So the original thought is, I am in the classroom and I have gone and inserted teaching. I am teaching. So you may say, what are you doing in the classroom? So I'm providing the information. So I'll get back to that soon. Okay, then. A sentence with a parenthesis is like a sandwich. Notice that on the outside, Okay, you have the staple, and on the inside, you can add. You can add anything that would enhance or make the thought more interesting. It is not just cheese I could put. I could put tomato. So over here, I could say, I am teaching English A in the classroom. So I would even add more information in the sentence. Now, let us look at our CSEC English A copyrighted objectives for this lesson. We are seeking, okay, to explain meaning conveyed through punctuation and paragraphing. We want to draw valid conclusions and inferences from information presented. And we will use appropriate diction and suitable punctuation and paragraphing to convey meaning clearly and with facility. That's what we want you to do, our students to do, and everyone really would like to write well and we all should try to do that okay then moving forward in our lesson what is a parenthesis what is it let us look the definition of parenthesis. According to the concise Oxford Dictionary, a parenthesis, the name, right? A word or phrase. So it's what you give it a name. So you give this name to a word or a phrase that is inserted as an explanation or afterthought in writing, usually marked off by brackets, dashes, and or commas. All right then. Usually marked off by brackets, okay, dashes or commas. That's one meaning. Number two, it says parentheses now. Now what am I talking about? Parentheses, a pair of round brackets. So what you call brackets is really parentheses. 
Now look at it on the board. Look at it as I show you. Now you have parenthesis, P-A-R-E-N-T-H-E-S-I-S. Right? That is one. And we have P A R E N T H E S E S right here. You see it? Parenthesis, parenthesis. And that is two. One parenthesis, two parentheses. That's what it is saying there. So what you would call brackets, you really should be saying parentheses. No. The parentheses, the two marks, And parenthesis is a name of when you add something to the sentence. So don't be confused. When you insert a thought into a sentence, as we have here, teaching, you have inserted a parenthesis, okay, in the sentence. Now this Parenthesis can be expressed using parentheses, these two marks, dashes, or commas. So these two marks take the name of the thing that you do in the sentence. Getting that? A bun that is ready to eat is like a sentence. It's complete. You don't really need anything to really eat a bun except your mouth. But you can improve the taste of a bun by adding cheese. When you add something extra to improve the, the, the thought, you have added a parenthesis to the sentence. So you could say the cheese is representing parenthesis or the additional information in the sentence. Let us continue. Here they are. These are parentheses. It takes the name from the thought. Dashes, and remember dashes are not hyphens. If you are typing on your computer, or your, your phone, two hyphens would make a dash. So that means a dash is a longer mark than a hyphen. Okay then? So dashes and commas, two of them must work together if you have inserted parentheses in a sentence. All right. So then, let us go back to the board. So I'm at the board and I have inserted teaching in this sentence. The original sentence says, 
I am in the classroom. But I went and I added teaching in the same way that I added the bun, uh, the cheese to the bun. I have went and I put teaching. I inserted that additional thought. I have inserted a parenthesis, an additional thought inside of the sentence. So then I am required to mark it off with certain marks. So then I put this mark and this mark. Okay then, these two marks are called parentheses. I could easily do it with two dashes or I could do it with two commas. So let me do it just the same so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to remove the parentheses, okay? And all I would have to do is to put comma, comma. See, I have isolated the additional thought that I placed in the sentence. I could take that out and I'm going to because the lesson is when you are writing and you have inserted a thought into an expression, a sentence, and that thought is not absolutely compulsory. For the understanding of the sentence, you should mark those thoughts off. And we have certain marks that we use to do that. So then, I add the parentheses, I had the dashes, I had the commas, and now I'm going to put in the dashes. So you'd have the dashes like this. This is called a parenthesis. It's an additional thought. And these two marks take the name for what you would do in the sentence. So these two marks are called parentheses. So the, the namesake, if you want to say it like that. But you may also choose to use two dashes or two commas. All right. Let us move on. Here is an example that we have on the screen. A says, coronavirus 19 is a disease. I understand that, don't you? We, we know it's a disease. You don't have to tell me anything more for me to understand what you're talking about because the moment you say disease, I'm, I'm going to get, you know, I have to pay attention to this. I understand the danger that's, that's involved. So I, uh, it's understood. It's a sentence. But then I want to add a parenthesis, an additional thought to clarify or improve what I said to you about the coronavirus 19. So at B, I say, coronavirus 19 is a respiratory disease. You see that? I have added greater information to the thought and I mark the thought off with parentheses. It's a matter of style. You don't have to use these. You could just dash, dash. So you say in, in C, the coronavirus 19 is a dash, respiratory dash disease I have marked off. Or I don't care for dashes, so I go for the commas. So you say coronavirus 19 is a respiratory disease. 
Okay then. So it's a matter of style, this one especially, because you may not feel the need to say, um, show any break. So it's, it's a matter of style. It's time now for our first of two breaks. We have much more after this. Welcome back to class time. If you are just joining us, this is English language. And we've been looking at improving expression using commas, dashes, and parentheses. Let us continue. We are continuing, but we must review. This is a very interesting topic. Very important that you understand what this is about. Maybe it is the first time you are learning that these two marks are called parentheses. Maybe you are always saying brackets. So now you will have to start changing, okay then, how you speak about these marks. So let us review. An idea that is not essential for the completion of a thought is called a parenthesis. Okay then? You insert a parenthesis into an, a complete thought. So it becomes an additional thought in your sentence. Punctuation marks used to include these ideas are parentheses, dashes and commas. Okay, wonderful. So get that. Let us now get into the meat of the matter. Get down into it now. Let us see if we can work out some ideas. In these sentences, we are going to work through the use of parentheses. All right then. Unlike chess and draughts, which are very ancient games, the game of dominoes is comparatively new. Okay then, that's a long sentence. Unlike chess and draughts, which are very ancient games, the game of dominoes is comparatively new. Now study the sentence. The first thing you want to do is to identify what is the essential thought in the sentence. This long sentence, it has more than one thought, but one of them is parenthesis. Now, unlike chess and draughts, the game of dominoes is comparatively new. So that's what it is saying, you know? 
Domino is not an old or ancient game. That's what it is saying. So this is the essential. I, I, you don't want to need anything more because it's telling you the place that Domino has in games in relation to other games. And you get the answer. It is, you know, fairly new. Now, what additional information is being communicated though? Look closely. Which are very ancient games? Now, we need to insert either commas, parentheses, or dashes to illustrate the explanation or afterthought. So where would you begin to insert the marks? Where would you put the first mark? The first mark would go to draughts. So you'd put your first mark at draughts. And where would you put the second mark? After games, after games. All right then? So the sentence is saying, these two are very ancient games, but you didn't really have to know that, to understand that it is saying that Domino is a fairly new game in comparison to those other ancient games. There it is. You may use dashes, parentheses, or commas to show the additional thought that has been added to the expression. Look at it. You may choose any pair when you are writing. It boils down to style. You know, what you really would like to use is your choice. But when you use the marks, you must use two not one, okay? To show an additional thought inserted into a, a sentence or an expression, you use two of those marks. All right, let us do another one. The introduction of pasteurization, which is a method of killing microorganisms by heat has been a major factor in making milk safer to drink. Has been, note the perfect tense. We did that the last class. Remember the perfect tense? Okay, has been. Okay, how would you punctuate this sentence? To show parenthesis, you know? To show that there's a, which is the additional thought? Okay, the introduction of pasteurization has been a major factor in making milk safer to drink. Pasteurization makes milk safer to drink. So when you take up a box of milk or a bottle of milk and it says pasteurized, you know, you have confidence because it's saying pasteurization makes milk safer to drink. So here's an additional thought, which is a method of killing microorganisms by heat. Which, which um, if it's safe, then maybe you won't even worry about how they got it to be saved, not, not all the time. So then you would put the first mark right here. Non-defining clause here we have here. So we have the first mark here, whether it be a parenthesis, one, 
and put the other one right here. Two. Or comma, comma, or dash, dash. Okay. Things are getting warmer now. Suppose you had a summary writing exercise to do in your test or classwork. You know that in summary writing, you are limited. You want to reduce, but you do not want to necessarily leave out some essential bit of information. Let's read this. How would you summarize this in one sentence? Let's see if we can. And use parenthesis. Okay then, while doing so. A bank robber was jailed for 10 and a half years yesterday after being identified by his ear print. Thomas Lee Matter, 38, of Lime Street, East Amazon, wore a mask when he raided Moneymakers Bank in Avalot, Wessex. He was filmed by security cameras inside the bank and his exposed ears and eyebrows were singled out as vital clues in his conviction. And he said, whoa, I don't really know how to reduce this to a sentence. What you want to know is who, what happened, and the result. You could just fix that in a sentence. So who was the person? Okay then, Thomas Lee Matter. And what did he do? He robbed the bank and he was convicted. All right. Let's look at this. So the essential information in it is that Thomas Lee Matter of Amazon was caught and jailed for 10 years, 10 and a half years. So let us improve this now by a parenthesis. What am I doing? I am going to insert a thought an additional thought into the sentence to improve your understanding of what I'm writing or give you more information. So then, you may wonder about this person. So I'm going to say Thomas Lee Matter of Amazon, a bank robber identified by his ears, was caught and jailed for 10 and a half years. Okay then, that's one sentence. So let's go back to the first one, the one we were looking at before. So we were looking at all of those and we are reducing, summarizing, and we arrived at this. And you could use, if you didn't want to use the dashes, what could you use? Two commas or two parentheses. So if you didn't want to use a dash, okay, the matter of preference, what you use is as a matter of style. Two dashes two parentheses or two commas. Only make sure that you have the two of them. One before the thought and the other one after the thought. You get that? Parenthesis is a name 
of an additional thought or thoughts. You could put more than one thought in, a, in, in an expression to improve the person on, person's understanding of what it is that you are saying. And it enhances your writing and, and makes your communication effort greater. A sentence with a parenthesis is like a sandwich. It's like bun and then you add cheese. Okay then, you see this illustration? Out over all way over the bare sentence, the original. But look at in the inside. You could add all kinds of different things to improve. So notice it's not just meat that is in this bread and you have lettuce and some other things. So that is saying that you could have more than one additional thought in a sentence, in addition to the main thought, you know? And your sentence becomes complex or, or, or compound complex and more interesting to read, especially if you're doing story writing. All right then, a sentence with a parenthesis is like a sandwich. It's like a bun and you add cheese. You enhance your expression. You, you enhance the sentence. So we are continuing to test our understanding. This one is from the man of the house. Remember that short story? Yes, one of our short stories in the world of prose. All right then. So okay, this is a paragraph from the man of the house and I've left out a little bit of it here to, so that it's not too long. So the narrator is speaking, the little boy. And he says, when I woke, I heard my mother coughing below in the kitchen. She had been coughing for days, but I had paid no attention. And he goes on, the coughing sounded terrible. I dressed and went downstairs in my stocking defeat and in the clear morning light, I saw her unaware that she was being watched, collapsed into a little wicker work armchair holding her side. Remember the picture I just showed you. It had the imagery of multiple parentheses in the sentence. This is like it. Okay, then let's just go back to right. Now, when I woke, I heard my mother coughing below in the kitchen. Okay, that sounds okay. We don't really need anything more. It's it's all right. Okay, then. She had been coughing for days, but I had paid no attention. All right, then. Sentence has ended. Now look at the latter part. The coughing sounded terrible. You see this sentence? How many parentheses can you find in this sen long sentence? See it's long? How many parentheses can you find in that sentence? How many additional thoughts? What's the main thought of this, of this sentence down here? I dressed and went downstairs in my Talking feet, okay?
and in the clear morning light, I saw her unaware that she was being watched, collapsed into a little wicker work armchair holding her side. Now, where would you say the main sentence would pick up and which part would end? So I dressed and went downstairs in my stocking feet and in the clear morning light, I saw her collapsed into a little wickerwork armchair holding her side. This one is technical, right? <laughs> okay, you have to think a lot. So then you're going to look to see now which of the thoughts are, have been left out. Let me do it quickly one more time. Okay. I dressed and went downstairs in my stocking feet. And in the clear morning light, okay, I saw her, follow me, collapsed <laughs> into a little wickerwork armchair holding her side. So you're going to take those marks and insert them into the additional thoughts right here. All right then. So let's pause right here. Time for another break. Class time continues after these messages. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are now going to continue where we left off. All right, then. We have been looking at some really difficult parts of writing to test if you are really learning. And now I am going to go to a little extract of poem. Okay, then. From African Thunderstorm. Okay then, so let us take a look at this poem, African Thunderstorm, and there's a portion in the poem that has the use of parentheses. Now sometimes when you read your poem, right, you will see marks like these. So here is a dash, and here is another dash. And you have seen, um, you would think that it is just when you're writing your regular, um, you know, stories or you're writing a summary or you're writing a letter that you would be using these marks. But these marks appear in literature. They appear in all kinds of writing. And here we, we are seeing one set of marks in, in a poem. So in this poem... An African Thunderstorm, okay, by David Robadiri, okay then, he uses two dashes, all right then. He says, in the village, screams of delighted children toss and turn, okay then, 
in the whirling wind. And I pick up right here, women, babies clinging on their backs, dart about in and out madly. Now, study this line very carefully. Do you see the parenthesis that's inserted in the thought? Because he is saying that women dart about in and out madly. But he wants you to have a larger picture because you have women and they are children. So he, he inserts the parenthesis in the lines and he says, what does he say about the women? They have babies clinging on their backs while they are darting about. They are running up and down in the whirlwind and the babies are strapped to their backs. And you know in that culture it's quite common for women to, to carry babies on their backs so that they can work and nurse the baby at the same time. You know, multitasking. So he wants you to get a better picture of what is happening. So he has inserted the, the apparent thesis in the verse using dashes this time. All right then. So when you are analyzing poetry, you can use the, the marks to help you in your analysis. That's very important. So then, we are coming down to the end of our lesson and we, we want to make sure that we end the way we began. We want to understand the concept of parenthesis, right? When we understand the concept of parenthesis, we know that we have a choice of two commas, two dashes, or two parentheses, which you call brackets. Stop calling them brackets and say parentheses, okay? The, the idea of a sandwich is useful. Remember that. And that's a simple analogy. All right then, so I think we have time for our last exercise, which we are going to work on quickly. This is a letter of apology. Okay, we are writing to express our regret concerning the, the delay in delivery of your order, says the customer service agent. Due to the pandemic, Experienced worldwide, the government has announced strict curfew hours to which we have to adhere. Subsequently, the stipulated delivery time was not met. The driver who had several items to be dispatched that afternoon reported that there was heavy traffic in the constant spring vicinity, which caused the delivery to be delayed. The item has been rescheduled for delivery first thing in the morning. Okay then, so right away, we want to look at the thoughts that are inserted, the parenthesis, right? Here is one, okay? Worldwide, so due to the pandemic, Experience world, a pandemic is, 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 means a worldwide problem. So therefore, you would mark off this part. And you would say, due to the pandemic, the government has announced. So you would begin your mark right here. And you would put the other mark, okay then, right here. To show that that's an additional thought. Okay, that's all we have time for today. As usual, you can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN 
at 5 p.m. And remember, this cool Time Channel 24-hour learning on One Spot Media. Join us tomorrow for more English language. You can watch the lesson in real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. Until then, keep safe. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching.